Okay, here we are, part five, the king's portrait. And in case you're wondering what I look like, that's a self-portrait I did of me as the villain, Jared Botticelli, in the novel. And uh, of course, the frame was made by my father, Richard Krieger. All right, let's get started. The King's Portrait, part five. <clears throat> oh. The next few months were wonderful. My father had never been happier. As time went on, though, he started to become ill again. I asked the painter if he could help. He replied rather shrewdly to my request and asked if he hadn't done enough for our kingdom. I'd never seen such a look on his face, nor heard such a tone with him before, but I asked again if there was anything he could do. He reluctantly agreed to help. I was grateful, but I should have paid closer attention to the way he was acting. The next day I was called to my father's bedside. He was dying, yet at peace to know he'd raised a son who would be good to the people. I called for the painter to see if there was anything he could do. When he arrived, he had his paintbrush and palette in hand, along with a tall, blank canvas. I was happy to see that he was ready to help, yet intrigued to see this tall canvas stand before me. I wondered what it possibly could have to do with the fate of my father. The painter looked at me, and then he looked at his palette with disappointment. He said that it was a shame, for he couldn't possibly save his life without a proper variety of colors. He said that if I wanted to save him, he would need all the kingdom's paint, every color, every shade, every last drop that we had, and to leave no stone unturned until we were certain we had recovered it all. So I ordered all the kingdom's paint, every last drop to be brought to the castle and into my father's chambers by nightfall. Nightfall came and my father was truly now on his last breath, as all the kingdom's paint lay before him. I asked the painter what he could do for my father now. He explained that he couldn't save his life, but that what he was about to do would prolong it until he came up with a solution. He also told me that what he planned may frighten anyone in the room, so he asked everyone to leave but myself. When everyone left the room, the painter told me to keep his talent for prolonging life a secret. I agreed, and then asked what he was going to do that would frighten everyone so much. The painter said he was going to save my father's life by painting him onto the canvas. Therefore, he would become a painting and not die. I was awestruck, but relieved that my father would be safe for now. The painter explained that as long as he was a portrait, he'd be fine. The painter then painted a door on the wall, and then he opened it and put all the kingdom's paint inside. He then shut the door and painted a magical lock over it, his brush being the key. He told me that he didn't yet have the right mixture to paint my father back to health and asked that we make sure that we truly had recovered all the kingdom's paint. I ordered a search for more paint, every last drop, to leave no stone unturned till we were certain we had recovered it all. The painter had another purely peculiar request. He asked that no one in the kingdom be allowed to daydream or have any creative thoughts whatsoever, for it would stifle his own imaginative mind and not allow him to truly concentrate on painting my father back to health. I agreed, and so the order, order was made. I asked every day if my father was getting any better, and every day the painter said he hadn't come up with the right mixture yet. Finally. One day the painter told me that he would need a 
Weak of no disturbances to be able to concentrate. I agreed in order that no one even so much as set foot on that side of the castle. After a week had passed, I went to visit with my father to see if the painter had any results. To my amazement, my father stepped out of his room, shutting the door behind him. I rejoiced at my father's good health as we gave each other a warm embrace. My father, however, had some terrible news. The painter had fallen ill and had to be painted onto the canvas. I asked if I could see him. My father said no one would be allowed, for the sight was far too unbearable. My father acted quite peculiar over the next couple of weeks. He ordered raids on the villagers' homes to ensure they had no paint hidden, and all newcomers were banned until further notice. And he started to imprison anyone with even the slightest bit of creativity or imagination. When I asked my father why he was doing all of this, he explained that the painter saved his life. He was merely returning the favor in kind by ensuring that all the paint available would be ready at a moment's notice. I asked then why imprison the villagers with even the slightest creative mind. He explained that any creativity would merely stifle the painters, that perhaps I myself would be needed soon to help paint him back to health. I didn't argue and did as he asked, for the painter's life hang in the balance the same as his head. A few days had passed, and all the paint in the kingdom was truly recovered. I doubt we could have squeezed a single drop more. I went to tell my father, but he was sleeping, and orders were that no one disturb him. I then took it upon myself to take the last of the paint to where the painter's portrait hung. When I opened the door, to my surprise, it was not the painter in the portrait, but my father, and he still remained ill. I quietly shut the door and asked my father what had happened, why he was still ill and in the portrait. He told me the painter had lied to us, that he had imprisoned him in the portrait, and that he'd spent a whole week painting himself in my father's image with plans to take over and rule our kingdom. I looked around the room and noticed the box with the paintbrush still in it. I picked it up and vowed to end this plot and my father's plight once and for all. Just as I had done this, the painter entered the room with a sinister laugh and a smile to match. I threatened to paint him out of existence if he did not release my father from the canvas. But he just stood there laughing loudly and arrogantly. So I dipped the brush in paint and made good on my threat, but, but nothing happened. He then took the paintbrush out of my hand as he forced me out of the room and ordered my imprisonment. After I was locked up, he visited with me. He asked if I cared to leave my cell with, cell with the promise of joining him as his apprentice, but that my father would have to remain imprisoned in the canvas forever. I declined and remained weeping in my cell, until one night a man wearing a cloak secretly came to visit me. He introdu introduced himself as Ethan Bourdain of Italy, and former friend of Botticelli. He then removed his hood, showing me his badly scarred face. I asked what had happened to leave him so col colorfully mangled and disfigured. He told me the story of how Botticelli had done the same thing to his father and tried to conquer their kingdom, but failed miserably and was banished for his trickery. And this, fellow reader, is the story that he told me. I'll see you next on part six, and you're not going to want to miss it.